What's going on, Badger Nation? Welcome to the PPC Den Podcast. And I am especially excited today because we are joined by Brent from AMZ Pathfinder, my friend. And if you're watching this on YouTube, you can see that we are in person today. What's going on? Welcome to Austin. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, this is great to be here. <laughs> uh, what do you think of Austin so far? I've had a fantastic time. I just didn't know that it would be uh, humid as a jungle. That is apparently. right. Constant humidity around 80%. It's not a dry heat. You know, there are parts of Texas that are dry. This is not one of them. Yeah. It was like, come to Texas. It's hot. Come to Texas. It's dry. <laughs> no, not at all. What do you think of Texas barbecue? Is this your first time with Texas barbecue? That's right. Just yesterday, uh, I went to, I think it's called Terry Black's, one of the big well-known establishments on the south side of the river. Yes. Uh, 10 out of 10. Yes. You just made the line a little longer there. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this also, so you normally live in Europe. You live in France normally. And we were also just laughing because like the drink of the summer is hard seltzer. And you had a hard seltzer. How was, how was, how was that? I'll be honest, I've had more than a hard seltzer. <laughs> I've had a couple hard seltzers. And it's been an eye-opener because uh, this is something that has not arrived on European shores yet, mm -hmm. uh, or in Asia for that matter. I was speaking with someone else who lives there uh, at a party. And you know, this is a, a strictly North American phenomenon at this point, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. And how is it? Last, I'm just peppering you with questions now. <laughs> uh, is this your first in-person podcast recording? Um, no, actually I've done, uh, others, but many years ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Many years ago. And of course, since COVID, it's been a lot harder to do that, yeah. but this is my first in a long time. Yes. And we are here. We've got one, two, three, four, five cameras set up. I hope the audio for this and the video comes out. A okay. Um, but enough about us. I'm really excited because this topic, we're going to talk about another topic and we'll have to schedule that for another day, uh, like blended ACOS discussions. This topic got you very excited. What, what is it about this new budget tab inside Amazon advertising that got you like jazzed up and you wanted to pick this topic? Yeah, it was mainly because we've been dealing with a client we've taken on in the last couple of months who has a a very large uh, ad spend, you know, level on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. And we needed better data from Amazon about how to adjust this budget for like where it's being allocated at the portfolio level, the product level, what time of day things are going out of budget. And this was until recently something we missed a lot of the functionality for. It just didn't exist, um, at least in the interface as we're talking about here. Um, and so it was a pressing need <laughs> and, you know, with accounts with larger spend velocity, I like to kind of frame it. This is a really important set of reports and information. Mm -hmm. uh, and can you tell me more about that situation that you were in with that particular client? Like why was budgeting such an important factor for this client? Yeah, it's a really simple answer. We had a clear path towards spending more for them, uh, still at, you know, below or at target aid costs, always a concern for advertisers. But the problem was they wanted better visibility into where the money was going and how it was being allocated throughout the day. And those are really hard questions to answer sometimes with the tools that we currently have. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, we understand that we have 17% ACOS on this product, which is one of our big sellers. But you know, how does that compare to the other ones in the catalog? And you know, we know that campaigns go on a budget because we see it in the interface. Uh, how do we prevent that from happening? So they're comfortable with spending more. Uh, it's just a question of the allocation and and these other questions of uh, you know when things are going in and out of budget. Yeah, you hear so many stories. Uh, I talk to so many people that say, "Hey, I like watch my Amazon advertising all day to try to see when the out of budget notification goes on," and that's incredibly time consuming. And you know, you get into this sort of part of Amazon advertising where it's like such a simple piece of information it takes so much effort and so much mental load to actually go and find out. So we took a step in the right direction today, which is what we're going to be talking about the new budget tab and the new budget report. Um, and I couldn't be anytime there's a new feature. I'm always excited to dig in, decipher and try to understand like the value out of it. And I always try to think in terms of systems, like how do we actually approach using this? How do we work this into our 
Amazon PPC optimization workflow, which is what we hope to talk about today. So the first thing that's probably worth talking about is that this is not available for every account yet. Um, which, what have you noticed? Like, do you have any rough like percentage of clients that have the report, maybe the, what marketplace they're in, anything like that? Yeah. First thing it's us only for sure. That much we've definitely noticed. Yep. And, uh, there's no rhyme or reason to what accounts are seemingly receiving access to it. This is Amazon's like, you know, last public beta stage of this or rolling it out. I, I would suppose, uh, if you ask me to break down the catalog percentage, I don't know. We haven't even tried that internally, but I did notice it came to a lot of uh, accounts that are smaller and probably don't need this feature. Uh, you know, if you're spending five or six thousand dollars a month and the SKU catalog is fairly limited, this is maybe not the most useful thing for you. Uh, it's nice to have, and I think it should have been there for a while. But uh, accounts that are spending far more than that, it's going to be far more. Uh, you, you know, have a better utility, I suppose. Yeah. And before we talk about that utility, let's just do a quick rundown of each column of this new tab, uh, this budget tab and this budget report. Um, so looks fairly familiar. You know, it's got active status, you know, enabled pause, which you can pause. It's got the campaign name. It's got some portfolio information, uh, the status, the type of the campaign, uh, basic stuff like sales, ROAS, and then we start to get into cool report specific stuff. And the first one is average time and budget as a percentage. And it's got a cool little like bar indicator. So 100% the bar is full, 50% the bar is halfway full. Average time and budget is what exactly? So during the period of the day, whatever that day is, I'm assuming we're looking at a US account and, and on my screen here, this is you know Pacific time, AKA Amazon time, 24 hour period of a day. What is the time that that campaign is in budget? It's still actively spending. It hasn't hit its threshold and it said, okay, for today we're done. You know, we're a hundred dollars. We're on track for that. We spent a hundred and it shuts down. So I'm looking at one that says 92%. You know, it's spent for 92% of the day. Yeah. Average time in budget and, you know, the opposite, the, the inverse metric would be average time out of budget, I think. So if you're running your ads and then at 12 noon, you are budget capped for the remainder of the day, that number would be 50%. Uh, you'd be 50% in budget, 50% out of budget. So average time in budget, if you have a hundred percent, that means you never went out of budget, uh, which is, Neat. So you can start to see like what campaigns ha are budget limited, which ones are not budget limited. And then for the campaigns that are budget limited, we've got a whole slew of metrics to describe what the estimated missed opportunity of the time that you were out of budget. Uh, why don't you break down some of those for us? Yeah, sure. And I think as we go uh, to the right on the chart, they get a little bit less and less. Uh, I have a less and less confidence in them, right? <laughs> so the first one is missed impressions, ad impressions, you know, actual views of the ad. I think that's reasonable that Amazon could give us an estimate how many people may have seen this had you stayed in budget. Maybe they're looking at the data for that day or last seven days or, you know, some recent time period. Missed clicks. Okay. Uh, based on the click through rate, they could give us a range here. And I see for some of the campaigns, uh, it says not enough data. Uh, so they are saying, you know, we don't have enough confidence in the amount of spend you have here to give you a reasonable estimate. Uh, so missed clicks and then missed sales. Uh, I think this is where you and I looked at this and we both looked at each other like, come on, <laughs> because, uh, you know, yet again, they can make some reasonable assumptions based on conversion rates, but the range here is pretty big for some of these uh, campaigns I'm looking at. It's a wide, wide range. What's your range? Uh, I mean, I have one here. This is for a really big campaign, but it says anywhere from 3.2K, you know, USD to 9.7K. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> right. that's, that's a huge, huge range. Yeah. So, you know, the way that I imagine that these work is, you know, let's say you get a hundred clicks to up to noon. Are they approximating that if you had it running, you know, for another 12 hours, you would have, you know, missed out on you know, you would have earned an extra hundred clicks as it's 50% of the day. Are they factoring in like busier times of day? Um, 
I want to say I doubt that because, you know, hour by hour information is very, it's like, doesn't really exist in Amazon advertising. So, you know, they're making their best guesses as to if you were running it, what you could have captured. And, you know, with any new PPC feature, I always feel like it's my job to try to like, you know, warn people, like if you were going to overspend on your ads, meaning if you were going to spend in a way that had a different ROI than your current spend, this might be where things could go awry. Like you see that and you're just like, well, let me up bid. I'm sorry, let me increase budget because if I did, I'd have, you know, so many more sales. And again, there's no guarantee that an increase in spend is going to convert at the same amount as what it converted at in the past. So it's just something to monitor as we start to pull this report apart. Mm -hmm. And to be fair, they do say estimated. Estimated. They don't say this is how many clicks you missed for sure. They're giving us a range or estimating. Yes. And I mean, I feel being a little bit cynical looking at this, uh, I feel like this is one of these columns that uh, you know, an advertiser or like a client of an agency might see and say, look, look, we missed $3,000 in sales. Right. And it creates a sense of urgency and like a need to like increase spend, push spend, yeah. which, you know, Amazon might have that objective uh, yeah. <laughs> on, the, on their list. Do you think? I'd never heard that before. No, yeah, but, that, that they really? want, just want you to spend <laughs> more. Um, but yes, you know, I, I always, you know, we're getting into a little strategy here, but like any budget increase, I'm always a fan of like incremental movement, move it up a little bit monitor, move it up a little bit more, monitor, uh, instead of just jumping the gun. So, you know, if I saw 50% missing budget, I can understand the impulse to be like, well, let's just double it. You know, we're out of budget 50% of the time, let's just double it. And, you know, that could be completely fine. Like you might only be switching from, you know, $20 to $40. Um, but for certain cases where you're spending $2,000 to just jump it up uh, a major percentage might be worth inching it up. I generally think, um, it's got, then it's got like basic stuff, budget, recommended budget, and an apply button to apply their recommended budget. So, you know, another thing to say about this is you can change, you know, you can run filters for show me things that are, you know, average time and budget, which is less than 80%. You can do things like select multiple campaigns and say increase budget 20%, increase budget you know, 30%, whatever you want. So you can go in there and make some budget changes, uh, which could have its utility if you wanted to go in and, you know, maybe you're approaching Black Friday, maybe you're approaching Prime Day and you just want to give certain campaigns a budget boost. You can now select a couple from here, get a sense of how many missed impressions they have normally, and then assume that impressions are going to go up during those important sales days. So there's some cool utility here that is definitely worth getting acquainted with because so much of PPC is just knowing the fastest way to do things. And if you can know how many clicks you're normally missing going into a big sales day or something like that, you can go in here, observe that, run a filter, and then, you know, change 10 budgets at once, you know, increase to 10%, whatever you need to pretty darn quickly. Um, so that's an important part of PPC, just knowing where things are and knowing how quickly you can get them done. Efficiency. Yeah, in fact, when I first saw this uh, beta tab up here, the first three things I did is I went in, I enabled all the columns Mm -hmm. straight away, see what's there. I uh, made a filter for what you said, 80%, um, you know, lower than 80% average time and budget and looked at those, you know, handful of campaigns and said, oh, interesting. Okay, see how this works. And then I selected a couple and I looked at what the uh, actions I could take in the bulk actions, kind of like clicker submenu there are. Uh, and, you know, keep in mind, this is not bulk operations like in a flat file. This is just taking action in bulk to multiple campaigns from this new tab. And that looks quite useful. I, I like that. So, mm-hmm. you know, kudos to Amazon for putting that together. <laughs> Alrighty. Now let's talk purpose behind this re- report. You know, best case scenario, you know, perfect day, ideal, ideal conditions. What is the big value that advertisers can get from this report? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is what campaigns that are delivering ROAS that's on target or above target are missing budgets that you can increase, right? Mm-hmm. This is the the main objective that you and I kind of discussed. Like that's number one. Simple. So yeah, just literally just looking, hey, what campaigns are doing great in terms of performance? Are they also budget limited? If so, let me fix that right here. So it just sort of 
puts that right in front of you, makes it really simple to go and get that data. And like at its best, like that's exactly what this campaign budget report does. So highly recommend it for those purposes. I also think it's worth mentioning that the worst case scenario with this report is that there's not a lot of discernment. You just sort of go in and you say, I want more traffic. And then you just pump up everything that's missing like impressions, missing clicks, missing all of those things. I feel like you might be, you might get yourself into a pretty sticky scenario if you're not, not only looking at the missing time out of budget, but also looking at your current ROAS. Uh, Because most people don't have a spend or visibility KPI. Most people have like a ROAS or ACOS API all the time. So like this is very heavily focused on budget, spending, what are you missing? You're missing all this stuff, go increase your budget. And it's like, okay, but let me take a look at my existing ROAS. And then even then I'm just going to inch it up a little bit. So like if you're having conversations uh, about this with you, your clients, your team, whoever, I think it's very important to be sure you combine those things, have both of those, the missed budget and the current ROAS. And you might say, Hey, I'm missing budget over here missing a whole bunch of impressions, but my ROAS isn't where I want it. Maybe I can go to that campaign, pare it down, improve the ROAS, and then reassess if I'm still missing budget and then give it some more juice if it needs it. So important considerations to make so that you don't blow your spend out of the water here. Yeah. An additional thing I would add, like think of budgets as like uh, a series of like nesting dolls almost because you have the account overall and then I, I personally think they're going to have a portfolio daily budget, but you can do a monthly one uh, as well, which we sometimes use in accounts. And then you have the campaign one. And then inside the campaign, you have the level of bids that you're setting, and that's going to dictate the pacing of your spend, right? So all those things have to kind of align in order to spend to the level that you want. And if you do go in and you say like, uh, yeah, let's just like hit these, uh, you know, apply all these recommended budgets, boom, 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 boom. Yeah, you're probably going to go and blow out your portfolio level or your daily overall cap. And then it's going to cause a kind of like traffic jam in the account. And, you know, maybe other campaigns that were on track are now going to be under pacing. They're not going to be spending as much as they could um, as well. So then they'll pop up <laughs> and it, it could create some other complications. Yeah, I'd be very nervous at the apply all button, like apply all the recommended budgets. It's like, whoa, we need to really, (laughs) you know, discern. And, you know, there's some interesting things here about, because there's the interface where you can make those actions, but there's also a downloadable downloadable report for sponsored products here, uh, sponsored products budget report. And there were some different you know, there's different functionality for it. Like the first one is it's easier to browse things in a spreadsheet for a lot of advertisers. So if you just want, if you had a tons of campaigns, you want to download that spreadsheet, you can view it all pretty quickly. You can run your filters faster uh, inside Excel or Google Sheets than inside the advertising interface. So like that's one purpose. But there was also some other interesting things inside the downloadable report that was not available in the interface. So why it's hidden, I have no idea because these are pretty interesting metrics to look at. So if you download the spreadsheet, you actually get these hidden, I'm calling them hidden because they're not in the interface, these hidden columns, which are pretty interesting. And I know we did some uh, analysis of this before the call. We crunched some numbers. And we, it was, we did the math. And it was kind of <laughs> crazy. So for a lot of these metrics, it was for some random reason, why only on this report, but it was showing you how much spend last year you had during that same time period. So like you downloaded the 30 day report, it was showing you what you did 30 days last, like the same time period last year for spend, for clicks, for revenue, all this stuff. So as far as I know, this is, I think this is the only way you can get specific date year over year data inside Amazon advertising because you can't get it elsewhere. You can't go to the date selector and say, compare against a year ago. You, and you can't get in a search term report. You can get it here though. Very, another odd decision. They snuck it in there they for sure. They snuck it in there. So and we had a discussion about it earlier. Mm-hmm. We were like, but is it the whole year? And then we add the numbers. No, it couldn't be. It's far too low. Yeah. And then based on what we knew about the respective accounts we were looking at, we said, no, this makes sense for a 30 day time period. And like Mike says, it's impossible to do this 
unless you do lifetime, then you can look just by month. But say you want to do the 15th of June to the 15th of July. Yeah, or Black Friday. Or Black Friday. Yeah. Any of these days that are uh, recurring yearly and are generally speaking the same date. You know, unfortunately, Prime is not the same day every year. They I actually dark, think it should be. Yeah. Oh, of course. That's my stance now. It should be Prime. Christmas in July. It should be the same day every year. Yes. Anyway, that's for another podcast. Yes. Um, but that would make things easier to compare year over year, right? And we'd be able to uh, say, oh, well, Prime, last year we did this. And we didn't have that campaign, so that doesn't count. But, uh, you know, this one we did have and look right. how it did. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. Because this breaks it down by campaign, what it was doing this time last year and t- for a whole bunch of different metrics. And then we made ourselves upset uh, <laughs> because what we did was we compared the spend, the clicks, the CPCs for like this year, 2021, <laughs> and then compared it to the same time last year. And we both got very depressed. Yeah, that was a rough moment. Uh, <laughs> essentially, what we found is, you know, we're, we're paying more for less clicks, right? Yes. Therefore, the average CPC is more expensive. Yes. So in this industry that I was looking at, um, they spent uh, like $11,000 for like 13,000 clicks uh, this year. So that's like a 91 cent CPC. Last year... They spent less. They only spent eight thousand instead of eleven thousand, and they got nineteen thousand clicks instead of thirteen thousand clicks for an average CPC of forty-four cents. So in this account last year, they were spending an average of forty-four cents, and this year they were spending ninety-one cents. To see it like this was painful. Like to. To know that we all know CPCs are going up. Um, we're doing an ongoing series on this podcast talking about how to boost conversion rates. Like it'd be great to counteract a rising CPC with better conversion rates. It's it's so we all knew that CPCs are going up, but it's brutal to actually see, to actually, you know, I'm gonna have a conversation with this client and be like, hey, you know, last year your sponsored products CPC was 44 cents. Now it's 91. Um, so we're paying more for fewer clicks. Uh, that's tough to swallow. And then you were looking at one of your reports and you noticed the exact same thing. Yep. Same trend. So in this case, the discrepancy in clicks was, uh, not that great, but the discrepancy in spend, uh, in this case is, uh, actually close to Mm $40,000 for this time period. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so basically a dollar 87, uh, to $2 and 36. And these are far more expensive products. I don't know the specifics of of your account, Mike, exactly, but I know what these products in this account are selling for, and that's why the CPC is higher. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, still a dollar eighty seven to two thirty six. Uh, pretty mm. substantial. Pretty yeah. substantial. And yet again, we have less clicks. Now, one thing we're not touching on is like the quality of these clicks. Are these you know shotgun auto campaigns, or are they hyper specific like mm-hmm. uh, exact match, or what the conversion rate is? But yeah, we're seeing a trend here with CPC. That's what we're focused on you know, specifically. Yeah. So they put this cool year over year data in here. Very interesting. If nothing else, you know, I always like on this show to leave people with like something to go do. And I mean, we're sort of giving you like two things here. The first is the budget report itself, download the budget report and you get this bonus thing to see what your sponsored products performance was year over year, which is really cool. And be sure you don't take the average of the CPC column because you want to take the sum of spend, sum of clicks, and then get your CPC from that as opposed to like the average of the CPC column. So we had that report talking about the budget report. And you also got a different report sent to you from an Amazon rep. I did. Yeah. We're lucky to have a a good relationship with an Amazon rep uh, at the same account I've been talking about so far. And essentially this report is kind of like a more basic stripped down version of what we've talked about here, but it does have one column that's very interesting. Um, So it gives us uh, on the left side, like, you know, campaign type, we have sponsored products. And then this report does include sponsored brands, which by the way, what we've talked about so far, I believe does yes. not. This is only it, sponsored this, products. This has all been sponsored products. Yeah, but this report does give us sponsored brands, not sponsored display, but sponsored brands was in there on the first edition we were sent. And we have this rep send us this report, um, is it every other week? I think it's every week, yeah. um, just because the spend velocity in this account. But essentially in column E in this report, it's called average OOB hour. So what is OOB? 
out of budget. And that hour is uh, you know, an hour stamp in 24 hour time. Uh, and in this case, we see a bunch of different numbers. I'm just looking at the report here. Uh, one of them is three, so three in the morning. Right. Uh, this this campaign went out of budget that quickly. You know, mm-hmm. the day started. They they had the shot the the shot for the starting day. The rooster was crowing. Yes. And then it was out of budget in three hours. Mm-hmm. And for some other uh, campaigns, we have uh, you know nineteen, uh, so seven o'clock p.m. at night or eight o'clock in the morning. You know, twelve noon. Uh, this is one thing that we lack in the um, tab that we've been talking mm-hmm. about so far in the report. I don't believe, Mike, we saw that anywhere no. so far. It'd be cool if it told you what hour of the day it went out of uh, stock. Yeah, so this uh, report uh, does give us that mm-hmm. information. Yeah, and it also gives us an underpacing tab, which is a different uh, kind of animal than out of budget. That basically says, hey, these campaigns did not spend to their capacity um, so, you know, this is how they, this is how they could spend two right. and you're pacing. I'm looking at one here, you know, that the budget for this is quite high, but it only spent 16% of its budget yeah. in that, in that time period. And the, so, re- and the recommendation is like, why don't you add a whole bunch more broad keywords to this campaign and fill up that budget? You got it. Uh, don't you? Up. Yes. If that's your KPI, I mean, that's, go for it. <laughs> right, you entered the budget. Yeah. So it's pretty interesting. That's the first report that I've seen that actually has any kind of hour of the day data in it. Um, obviously I've been wanting hour of the day data for quite some time now. Um, that's like an easy one to do that doesn't involve attribution of conversions because, you know, people might click on an ad, convert some other time, you know, what hour would you want that reported in? Whereas this is just straight up spend. So it makes a lot of sense that they could have this report pretty easy. Alrighty. Sum up. If I were to rate this new report, I'd probably call these, I probably call this budget report eight out of 10. I like it. I think it's cool. I think people should start using it. And I think the year over year to, to observe your CPC and data, I'd probably say that's, that's cool. That's probably like a six out of 10. Um, because that's just, it's cool to just watch those comparisons. There's probably be some, some moments where you'll want to know, Hey, what did I spend last year? Um, but it's more like a curiosity thing as opposed to it's like a true optimization thing. How would you rate the like utility of these new reports? Uh, yeah, I mean, let me think about that. I, I didn't know we did out of 10 ratings. Oh yeah. Uh, hotter, <laughs> is it hot or not? <laughs> hot or not. Uh, no, I'm confident with an, with an out of 10. 10 is good. Yeah. Um, so I, I would also give an eight out of 10. The only reason for points off, uh, I think it looks good. The interface is cool. Mm-hmm. We can do filters is we don't know what time the campaigns are out. Yeah. And that is information that we know Amazon has. We've mm-hmm. got it from other reports. Yeah. Maybe they will surface it in a future one. Uh, and explain and explain that because that would be very uh, helpful for troubleshooting. Yeah, and also to make it clear what time zone we're talking about. This mm-hmm. report that I was sent by this Amazon rep, I asked her a follow up question on the call: <laughs> Is it Pacific time? She wasn't entirely sure. Yeah. Uh, we would like to know what time zone that is. Yeah, uh, I think Amazon was talking about buying all time and just having it, uh, every, the entire Earth run on Amazon time. So that's why there's no like Pacific time. So it's like a time. China situation. It's, yes, it's just like this is Amazon time. Everyone operates on our. I've had the Jeffrey Bezos song by Bo Burnham stuck in my head for a while. Have you heard this? No, I haven't. Oh, oh man, man. You you're very to, you lucky. Need to show me. You're very lucky. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> so don't show me. Because it is a total earworm. It'll get stuck in your head for <laughs> quite some time. Everywhere I turn, I just hear the Jeffrey Bezos song by Bo Burnham. Well, much like hard seltzer, there's many things I've missed out on. You're missing out on, for a, while. on yeah. a lot of nuggets of American culture here. Okay. Um, so in terms of like the SOP, I think we kind of touched on it. Uh, I always like to put things in context of, you know, how do you actually use it? I think very simply, uh, depending on if you have a lot of you know budget issues, um, it's probably a once a week or a twice a month type activity going in, looking at what has a good ROAS, what kinds of things am I missing out on budget? Like when do I go out of budget? Um, so again, they show you percentage of time in budget. So if that number is 100%, that means you never run out of budget. And for your best campaigns, you're going to want your best campaigns to read 100% on there because they're always going to be in budget, meaning you are not budget limited. So that is probably one consideration that I'll be making um, for 
for accounts that have a big concern of this to do it on a weekly basis to be sure we're always capturing all of those impressions that may being sure that we're never missing out on anything. And that's probably the number one utility that I see here. Is there anything else that you are going to start incorporating into your own SOPs? I was thinking earlier when you were, were speaking on the percentages, might it also be interesting to look at the campaigns that are really, really low percentage, like let's say 14%. Uh, instead of like 85 or 90, like they're close to it and figure out um, because that percentage is is just so low, we know that the demand for these keywords, this product, whatever is like so high that it's outstripping uh, the, the ability of this to spend like so quickly. It's just burning through it, like poof, done. 14%, you know, that's like a couple hours at the beginning of the day. That should be a sign to you uh, that there's something to look at here. So. I think it is smart to look at the ones that are 85, 90% and maybe inch those up. But if something's like 12%, uh, either you're bidding way too aggressively yeah. and you're, you're doing something wrong, or maybe there's a lot of uh, demand yeah. coming in for that product combination with those keywords. And that's something to pay attention to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really interesting. Uh, and we mentioned this periodically because it's such an interesting phenomenon. But if you look at a campaign that says like 10%, 15%, meaning you're only in budget 15% of the time, you can actually get more clicks by lowering your CPC there. So like if you have a $10 a day budget and you're spending $1 per click, you might be running out of those 10 clicks in the entire day. But if you were potentially able to get clicks at 50 cents, you'd be able to get 20 clicks for that same $10 a day budget. So it's like an interesting consideration to play around with. I mean, that's actually really interesting too. Things that you're out of budget a lot for that have a bad a cost you could probably benefit by lowering the bids there, which you ideally would have captured anyway if you were doing bid optimization for high ACoS keywords. Um, but that's another interesting thing there. Like it's another diagnostic tool that could lead you to another decision. So much of PPC is trying to understand what the best move is. This could help double confirm that. Should I lower these bids? Yeah, the ACoS is bad. And also I'm like bumping up against budget. I could actually potentially reduce bids and get more clicks for the same budget. It's a very interesting concept. One more thing I'll add uh, as far as the problem we stated earlier where people are sitting at their campaign manager account console, like refreshing it and saying like, okay, when is it out of budget? When yeah. is it out of budget? And even that information is outdated. Uh, you know, we learned on Prime Day, of course, like every year, there's some issues with the advertising console and you can't see the spend updated accurately, which is, you know, kind of normal on a day like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, this still doesn't really solve that problem, mm -hmm. but it gets us one step closer. You know, wish list request for Amazon, challenge for Amazon, give us some sort of notification in the areas, uh, the notification area in there that tells us when the campaign went out of budget and then points us yeah. to this tab where we can go look at the percentage uh, or maybe through the API software could be able to uh, uh, send a notification um, to us via email. Uh, maybe even something like Slack. Now I'm just really spitballing. Oh, now. yeah, right. <laughs> and say, hey, this campaign's out of budget. You know, dream scenario, right? Mm -hmm. One other thing I did notice, uh, I heard about this talked in some groups online, is Amazon has a new feature that they've been talking about. Maybe this is for a future episode, but like the ability to dynamically adjust budgets based on some like rules or conditions. Mm -hmm. So let's say you increment the campaign by another 30 US dollars or something when it runs out before a certain time, that's a really interesting way mm -hmm. to combat this. Ideally, you know, in my opinion, you should be matching the price you're paying and the bids and the search terms, keywords, targets, whatever, inside the campaign with the budget. Those two things should be in harmony, so it's gonna run at 100%. But maybe there's a little workaround with using something that's like a temporary adjustment or a rule-based system. An idea. Yeah, that's a pretty serious wish list. <laughs> 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 well, <laughs> yeah, uh, challenge to Amazon, yes. like I like to say. Well, use the new budget tab, download the budget report and poke around with what your data was last year. Um, brace yourself, maybe have a drink while you download that report and look at what your CPCs were oh. a year ago. Oh. Oy. Yeah, it was pretty painful. But um, this is a cool little report. It's another piece of information that you can use to optimize your campaigns. And again, as with anything, you can use it. And if your competition is not using it, it's just one more tool that helps you stick ahead and better manage your campaigns with all these rising CPCs. And that is our episode. Brent, do you have any other big Texas plans while you're here in town? 
Uh, no rodeos planned, unfortunately. Oh, we got to change it. I don't think I'm doing any SpaceX flights anytime okay. soon. Um, just trying to think how loud. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, I plan to do some cycling around the city, maybe some bouldering at uh, the one bouldering gym. Yeah. Yes. Pretty, pretty sedate after a couple intense uh, days, yeah. the last couple of days here. So <laughs> Yes, Austin's a big party. It could definitely feel like that. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming on the show. It is always great to talk with you. Um, you run an agency, AMZ Pathfinder, uh, which is phenomenal. Um, so you guys can go check him out too over there. And I hope this episode recorded because we're just an experimental setup. I haven't done an in-person podcast in a very long time. So I hope I remembered how to, I hope we turned all the recording devices I on. I think it went well. I hope so. Yes. Have a good one, everyone. And I will see you here next week on the PPC Den podcast. You can get everything at badger.com slash podcast or wherever you like to download podcasts. Have a good one. See you next time.